Welcome, audiophiliacs. I know you're out there. Anyway, today's show is a review of the Vivid Audio Kaya 25. It, it has a shape like no other speaker, not even compared to other Vivid speakers, which are pretty shapely beasts, they are. But this one is its own thing. Now, I reviewed uh, the stand mount model from Vivid Audio about a year ago, the Kaya S12. And I'll link to that review. And I, I really like that speaker, but this one really builds on the strengths of the S12. It's a more evolved, it's just a more interesting design overall. Now, Vivid Audio was founded in 2004 by Lawrence Dickey. And well, before that, he worked for a speaker company, you guys probably know, Bowers and Wilkins. And he was the man behind the iconic Bowers and Wilkins Nautilus. I mean, there's a design, there's a speaker, right? Now, those long, let's say, tubes that are sticking out of the back of the speaker, the Nautilus, those are tapered tubes that Lawrence designed to absorb the back wave of the driver. So there's no reflections coming back to the drivers from inside the cabinet. And he's carried that design philosophy over to all of his Vivid speakers, not surprisingly. So, uh, by the way, this speaker stands about 45 inches tall. It's a big speaker, the Kaya 25 is. And it just, it does have a presence in the room. Now my samples were finished in this incredible uh, Porsche blue paint job. Gorgeous, stunning, impeccably finished. And it stands on a base of stainless steel. By the way, there's some, uh, some uh, construction noise outside my window today, so it'll intrude every now and then, and I apologize for that. Looking down at that stainless steel base, you'll see peeking out of the very back a pair of high-quality binding posts. The Kaya 25 is a two-way design. It has a 26 millimeter alloy dome tweeter and a 125 millimeter, that's five inches, uh, aluminum mid woofer. So here's an, here's an, ex, let's say an exploded view of the tweeter and the five inch mid woofer. And both of those drivers are designed and made in-house by Vivid. So that's a pretty rare uh, feat actually, because very few or relatively few high-end speaker companies actually design and make their drivers in-house. Some of them design them, have other companies make them, but Vivid does the whole thing in-house to control, well, the performance and how the drivers are built to the maximum because they're making them themselves, right? That's pretty interesting right there because it's a relatively small company and to take on that challenge of manufacturing drivers, that's, that's definitely worth mentioning which is why I'm mentioning it. And by the way, speaking of mentioning things, yes, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in the show. So let's look at the two drivers. So this 26 millimeter dome tweeter does have a tapered tube behind it. Yeah, but here's, here's where it really gets interesting. That five inch, that 125 millimeter mid woofer doesn't have a taper two behind it. What it has, I'm going to show you a cutaway of the inside of the Kaya 25. And you'll see that behind that speaker, extending down to the base, is what Lawrence calls an exponential absorber. So that sound goes down and then basically cancels itself as it's going down the exponential absorber. And the absorber, though it's not shown in this illustration, is, has stuffing in it that gets in, uh, increasingly dense as it gets down to the bottom of the speaker. So it's fully absorbing the back wave of the five inch driver. I wanna make mention that these uh, Kai 25s are on loan to me from Bill Parrish at GTT Audio. And he brought them here <laughs> and delivered them and he took them away. I've, I've, they're actually already gone as I'm shooting this video. The cabinet is a glass reinforced sandwich composite. Uh, I can't explain exactly what that means, but I will tell you that when I put my hand on the cabinet, when I was playing music really loud, I felt basically no energy, come, no vibes, no bad vibes coming from the cabinet itself. Now there is a rear port, a very small rear port, 
And I did feel a lot of air moving through that port when I played music loud. But I didn't hear any chuffing or any puffing or any huffing and puffing sounds coming from that port. The price, let's get to the price. The price is $11,000 a pair in the standard finishes, which are basically gloss white, gloss black, and a matte oyster finish. Uh, the optional extra cost finishes, like the one I have, um, it depends on the finish. So those are all automotive paint finishes. So it's basically anything you want that's available in automotive finishes, that's what you can have your Kaya 25s finished in. Let's take a peek at the specifications and prepare yourself. You are going to see a number that you almost never see anymore, and that is the impedance is rated at 8 ohms, dipping down to a very easy to drive 7.5 ohms. Now, it feels like almost every speaker I review is rated at 4 ohms and drops below 4 ohms, meaning it takes a lot of juice, a lot of current to make those speakers dance. That's not the case with this one. This one is actually a pretty easy load, but another spec that stands out is the sensitivity spec, which is 85 dB. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't it doesn't sound like that. It doesn't feel like a low sensitivity speaker, which I associate with speakers that sound sort of tamped down, that you really need to give them power to make them come alive. This one, no, not, not much. I basically used three amplifiers over the course of this review. I mean, I was moving things around. I used the Linear Tube Audio Ultra Linear and uh, the NAD M23. Those are the main amplifiers I used over the course of the review, and the preamp was always the same. It was a linear tube audio microzodal preamp. You know, I did it, I changed my, from my normal speaker cables that I use, which are either Nordis speaker cables, Carta speaker cables, or Analysis Plus. For this review, I used Kabbalah Temptation speaker cables. Now, I tried the other cables, but I did feel that the Kabbalah was the best match with the Kaya 25. As, as for speaker placement, with that port on the back that's moving a lot of air, you've got to give these speakers some breathing room. You're not going to jam them up against the wall. That would be a major, major no-no. Put them out at least a foot. I had them about three feet away from these uh, records and, book, and books behind me. So that's where they sounded best with basically no toe-in. So if the first recording I played was this one by Cal Jader. Now this is Latin jazz. It has a lot of percussion, a lot of brass, a lot of energy. And this speaker, yeah, 85 dB sensitivity speaker, it just lit up. It was very lively, almost like, well, like a Klipsch horn speaker or a JBL horn. It had that kind of speed and live sound quality, except I would say right up front, that tonally the Kaya 25 is ahead of the horns that I've, at least the horns that I've listened to here at home. It's a more refined sounding speaker. And the imaging is also well ahead of any horn speaker because it just has this very open, unboxy quality. The speaker really does get out of the way. By the way, I was using the Linear Tube Audio ultralinear amp with the Cal Jader recording. But I just wanted to continue, just play random stuff really loud. So I switched over to the NAD M23. It's a much more powerful amplifier. And I kept pushing this speaker louder and louder, as much as I could take it, which was about, let's say, the mid 90 dB range. And I didn't hear any imminent straining or distortion creeping up from the five inch driver or the one inch tweeter. It just, it had that freedom that it didn't seem to care even when I pushed it pretty loud. Now the bass went down to 40 hertz, very clean, very precise, nothing fat or muddying up the bass here. No, the bass is basically on the lean side, but it does go down, but only to 40 hertz. So if you really want that room shaking bass, yeah, you're gonna need to add a subwoofer or, or buy a bigger vivid speaker. Your choice, one or the other. But you know what I think? I mean, if I own these speakers, I would definitely not use them with a subwoofer because they're making certainly enough bass for me, but it's not enough bass if you listen to music with lots of deep bass and you want the room to shake. So it's one of those, it's up to you. 
So the next recording was this one. This is Dr. Lonnie Smith. It's called Breathe. It's a live album. He's a jazz musician, but the vocals on this record, which are not on every track, were by Iggy Pop. And the music just opened up through these speakers. They got out of the way and they let the music come right on through. And this, this recording has some weight to it, some body. And I noticed that when I switched between the M23, a 200 watt per channel amplifier, and the LTA Ultra Linear, a 20 watt per channel amplifier, I actually gravitated to the sound of the Ultra Linear because it had more weight to it, more mojo, more, more meat on the bones coming with the Linear Tube Audio Amplifier. And I wasn't playing it super loud, I was playing it comfortably loud for me, which is, and then, you know, I do say what loud means to me, and in this case it was around 85 dB, which is pretty loud, and it's 20 watts, and it's an 85 dB sensitivity speaker. So it, it can be done. Moving on from there, I played this extraordinary recording by a group called Echo Collective. Now they are a chamber group, a, a classical chamber group, but in this case they're playing the music of Radiohead. And the beauty of Radiohead's melodies and just the vibrancy of the music translates amazingly well to a chamber band. And there was just something about the believability of the instruments within the stage, how they each occupied their own space. Again, the Kaya 25 just frees the music. It lets it exist and populate the listening room. So up to this point, all the music examples I have noted to you uh, were on LP. But for CD, I played this one. This is Niels Fromm solo, and he plays piano. It's a solo piano recording. Everything about the piano, phys physicality is in this recording and released by these speakers. You could be, you felt like you were right there. And you also hear the room itself that the piano was in. So it's really like a spatial odyssey. I love the way the Kaya set the music free and the dynamic shading of each note, the fast tracks, the more subtle nuance, subtle you know, differences in dynamics, big ones, little ones. It, this uh, speaker really tracked those differences with ease. It certainly did. It does it, that's that thing, maybe because the, the back wave of the speaker is not interrupt, interrupting with the sound, maybe that's part of why this speaker doesn't sound like a typical, well, box speaker. So the next recording was this one by the Black Keys. And I'll say right up front, not a great recording. It is bright. It is massively compressed, annoyingly so. So the question was, would the Kaya 25 make this uh, at least a tolerable listening experience? Because you know, everybody's recording, recording collection varies a lot in quality. So the question is, will this very revealing speaker, how, will, how brutal will it be? So I did play it loud because it's rock music. It's brash, it's in your face. And maybe uh, the people who mixed and mastered this record and Black Keys themselves wanted this very uh, <laughs> in your face, very intense sound uh, quality. It's not an audiophile experience, but it is a musical experience. And on that way of looking at it, yeah. And I didn't feel that the Kaya 25 was just gonna burn uh, you know, holes in my eardrums. No, it was rock music, it was intense. And in that sense, it passed the test. I did try, because I've been raving about the Deckware Sara 300B amplifier. It's a seven watt per channel amplifier. And the answer is no. <laughs> that was definitely a no-go. Seven watts into a speaker with 85 dB sensitivity, uh, even playing it really, really quietly, I just felt this isn't a happy marriage. This isn't gonna last. So it was in and out in a few minutes. Changing gears, I wanted to compare the Pure Audio Project, my reference, my Pure Audio Project Duet 15s with the Kaya 25. Now, <laughs> the Pure Audio Project is a much larger speaker. It has a 15 inch woofer, it's open baffle. It's doing a very different thing. It just fills a room in a very different way. It's a bigger, fatter, meatier sounding speaker than the Kaya 25. But, <laughs> 
Sky 25 is way faster and clearer and more transparent and does transient response of brass and percussion so much better than the Pure Audio Project. Stepping back a second, it's not a matter of which one is the better speaker. They're very different sounding speakers. And it's up to the buyer who's, who's, sh who's shopping for speakers to figure out which one is the best fit for them, for their taste, for their room, for their, uh, their pocketbook. All of that goes into which is the best one. They're really different. I like them both, but they're kind of going in opposite directions. All right, I think we're going to do it. I think it's time for, so Steve, what do you really think? What do you really think of the Vivid Audio Kaya 25? I think this is a speaker that takes you there. It takes you inside the recording, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it lets you hear it incredibly well. But it is a tonally refined sounding speaker. It has a, which I associate with low distortion. Mid-range voices sound so right, so present. Um, it's a, you know, and I just kept listening. I mean, I have to tell you, over the course of doing reviews, there is a point where I say, enough, I can't take it anymore. I gotta stop listening to things, just finish taking my notes and move on. But this speaker, I just wanted to keep going and going and going, and that is the highest praise. Is it perfect? No, I just told you but earlier in this review how it is imperfect. It's expensive, it's $11,000 a pair, which is out of a lot of people's range. Um, its shape is not to everyone's taste. Its bass is not as deep as you might want for a speaker of this price. I mean, the, the KEF Reference 3 Meta that I reviewed last year, that's $15,000, but that's a much bigger speaker. It is a more powerful sounding speaker. It is also a very refined, very clear sounding speaker. It is, I would say, a step up in most ways of what you're getting from the Vivid Kaya 25. But it's a more, the, the KEF is a more imposing speaker. It really does dominate a room in ways that this one, as big as it is, doesn't do. So, you know, horses for courses, that sort of thing. Okay, speaking of horses for courses, yeah, it is now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Hey, this one comes to us from Ray from Melbourne, Australia. It's a mix of old and new stuff. There's a Rotel A11 CD player, Parasound P6 preamp, a vintage Inkel 100 watt dual mono power amp, and the speakers, these are classic, Mission Freedom 770, which he still absolutely loves. On the wall is a 1977 in turntable with its Formula 4 arm. Below are Maruni headphones from the 1970s. Thanks, Ray. Alrighty, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg. It still is, except no substitutes. This is the real thing. What do you think of my new shirt, by the way? This is my latest in my wardrobe choices. And these glasses are, I hope, temporary glasses. These are not my regular glasses in case you've noticed. But anyway, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon. Super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. See if it fits for you. And by the way, I should point this out more often. A lot of people join the Patreon, stay for a month or two, and then move on. And that's cool. So it's not like you have to stay there forever. You can come and go as you please. And you can join for a couple of bucks a month, up to $50 or $100 a month. At the top range, you and I will have a conversation every month. If you just like a video, please hit the like button. And if you like my channel, please subscribe if you have yet to do so. <laughs> That's all I got for today. So again, thank you so much for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.